morning United Kids and a very warm welcome in this hot weather to our VIPs, the first time visitors. If you could all give me an elbow hello, hello, hello. I hope you all enjoy today's lesson. So something is actually around the corner and I hope you know what it is. Yes, Christmas is around the corner. I hope you're excited as I am for Christmas just so that we can take some time to remember the birth of Christ. Now before we get there, we're going to be going into a new series called Waiting in Wonder. Waiting in Wonder. And this is where we're going to learn more about how God has prepared his people for his promises and God's love while they are waiting on him to deliver the promises. That's what we're going to be learning about, waiting in wonder. But don't worry, before we get into that, we're going to go in a time of worship and then we're going to go into the lesson where we're going to go through the big question. And the big question is, how do we keep our faith strong while we wait on God? Now, this is a good question because imagine while you're waiting on something to happen and you're waiting and waiting. So in that time, how do you keep your faith strong? That's what we're going to be going through today. But before we get there, let's go into a time of worship. And I'm going to just pray over today and pray for the lesson. Heavenly Father, thank you for being God supreme. Thank you for being our God and for all the things that you have created, you chose to have a relationship with us. Thank you for the strength that you give us daily, Lord God. And we pray that we open our ears to hear your words so we can continue to grow. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We pray this in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. Let's go and worship.
Boys and girls, isn't it amazing that we can always trust God because He is faithful? We can trust God because He never changes. Even while things in the world are going all around and everything seems crazy, God is always true and He is always faithful. God keeps every promise that He makes. We know this because we see it in the very Bible. The Bible is not only God's word, but it is also evidence for us that shows us all the times when God made a promise and kept a promise. Because we know that God keeps his promises, every single one of them, we can put our hope in him. Boys and girls, do you know the very first promise that God ever made to us? And do you know how all God's promises were all tied to one main person? What? You don't believe me? Well, let's watch this video together to find out what this promise was and who this main person is as well. God's story. Jesus is born. So part of God's story is about how he sent his son, Jesus, to be born. And it goes like this. Remember when God created a perfect garden? He also created a perfect family, Adam and Eve, to live in the garden with him forever. All they had to do was trust God. Then they would live with him forever in a perfect world where nothing bad happened, ever. Unfortunately, Adam and Eve stopped trusting God, so they disobeyed him. That's when all the wrong things in the world began. The worst part was they were separated from God because God is perfect and can't be around anything wrong. But God came up with a plan to rescue us from all the wrong things in the world. That way, he could be close to us again. For hundreds of years, God planned this rescue. He built a special family for the rescuer to be born into. He told prophets how to recognize the rescuer when he came. Prophets hear from God and then share it. God's family was so excited. And finally, it was time. God was ready to send his very own son, Jesus, to be with us on earth. Of course, he could have sent Jesus as a warrior or a superhero, but he didn't. He sent him the same way we all get here, as a baby. Now, that might not sound strange at first, but to a young woman named Mary, it was a huge surprise. God actually sent an angel to tell her that she was going to have a baby named Jesus. Mary was terrified, but she said, I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. Basically, Mary wanted what God wanted. Anyway, the news about Mary's baby also came as a big surprise to a man named Joseph. Mary was going to be his wife, and now she was going to have a baby. But Joseph wasn't the father. So an angel came to him in a dream. He said, Don't be afraid to take Mary home to be your wife. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. After hearing that, Joseph obeyed. A bit later, the king told people to go to their hometown to be counted. That was something that happened every once in a while. Joseph was from a little town called Bethlehem, so that's where he and Mary went. When they got there, Mary and Joseph couldn't find a place to stay. With nowhere else to go, they spent the night in a place where animals were kept. And that very night, Jesus was born. Mary laid him in a manger which is where animals eat. Here was the king of heaven, the perfect rescuer, born with animals and sleeping in a dirty feeding dish because nobody would make room for him. Kids, have you ever felt like nobody wanted you around? Well, that quiet, lonely moment was the moment God's whole family had been waiting for. So God did something special. He sent angels to some shepherds who were taking care of their sheep nearby. The angel said, Today, your Savior is born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. The shepherds went to find Jesus right away. They told others the news. The rescuer is here, and he is sleeping in a manger. Everybody who heard their story was amazed. This is what they had been waiting for. It just happened in a way that wasn't expected. Even though people had stopped trusting God, He loved them and us. He wants to be with us so much that He sent His very own Son to earth to live as a man. In fact, one of the names God called Jesus was Emmanuel, which means God with us. Through this tiny baby, God was close to His people again. 
and that's the story of when Jesus was born. But here's a quick version of what happened after Jesus was born. A star appeared in the sky. Magi followed it and worshiped Jesus. Jesus grew up. He never did anything wrong. He showed us what it looks like to follow God and love like God. Then he took the punishment for everything we've done wrong. Now we can all be close to God again. And that's a part of God's story. Okay, United Kids, let's see if you were paying attention to the video. Where in the Bible did God give us the very first promise? In Genesis! God made the first promise ever, ever to Adam and Eve. And this promise was that He would send a rescuer. Now, do you know who this rescuer is? This main person whom this promise was about? Yes, Jesus! It was about Jesus, boys and girls. God promised Adam and Eve that He would send Jesus to rescue them and rescue us from sin and death. We know that Adam and Eve broke the rule that God gave them in the garden and because of this, they were then sentenced to death. God said that if they do not listen to Him, then they would surely die because the reward of sin is death. But God loved them so much and He loves us so much that He did not want to see us just dying because of our mistakes. So what did He do? He promised to send Jesus. Jesus who would then be a rescuer for all of us that we do not have to die because of our sin anymore by having Him die for our sins. The Bible tells us that even though Adam and Eve had never seen Jesus actually being born, but they still had faith in the coming of Jesus. Not just Adam and Eve actually, but even Abraham and all the Israelites. God promised them and they believed in God. They trusted and put their faith in God and His promises. But it's a bit difficult to believe in something that you cannot see, right? Yeah, and also to wait on something you cannot see. It's not easy to do this. But Adam and Eve, Abraham and the Israelites kept their faith strong. What do you think helped them keep their faith strong while they waited on God? Well, let's see what the Bible says. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, the Bible tells us about what faith is and a secret ingredient that also helps keep our faith strong. Now let's see what it says. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Hmm, okay. So what this shows us boys and girls is that you cannot have faith without hope. There's something special about hope that helps keep our faith strong. Now we're going to find out just what that special thing about hope is that helps keep our faith strong in an illustration. Okay boys and girls, now the scripture in Hebrews 11 verse 1 says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. When we hope in something, we normally hope in something we cannot see, but something we're waiting on and something we believe is going to happen. And our faith in what we hope for is seen in how we wait on what we hope for. So if you really have faith in what you hope for and you're waiting on it, then you will wait and you won't be complaining, right? If your mother said, let's say, she's going to make you food, but you can't see the food yet, but you know that she's going to do it, your hope that you also have faith so you will wait while not complaining. If you start complaining and start making your own food then that shows that your hope is not in your mother and your faith is not in your mother either. So this is what this verse means. But if you still don't fully understand then we're going to use two balloons to help us understand better. These balloons. Now let's imagine that the air inside of the balloons which we cannot see is hope and the balloons themselves are faith. We can see the balloons, right? Yes. But even though we can't see the air inside, we know that there is air inside because if there wasn't any air, then these balloons would not be inflated, right? 
Yes, boys and girls, the same goes with faith and hope. We can't see when a person has hope, but we can see when a person has faith in what they're hoping in. You can see it through a person's actions. If you have faith in your mother making you food, then you will wait for her. And we can see that you have faith because of your actions. So we can see that these balloons have air inside because they're inflated. This is how faith is then substance for what we hope for and evidence of what we cannot see. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. But boys and girls, we know that both these balloons have air inside because they're both inflated, right? But the air they have inside is not the same. And we will be able to see which air is better from how these balloons behave when I let them go. I've written on these balloons faith in God and faith in the world. Now, we were asking ourselves the question, how did Adam and Eve, Abraham and all the Israelites keep their faith in God strong while they waited on God? Because sometimes we start out having faith in someone or something that even though we can't see it and we're waiting, we still have faith, right? But the longer we wait and the more things around us don't seem to add up, we start losing our faith and our faith starts becoming weaker and weaker. Do you know there's something that will help us keep our faith strong even while we wait for a long time? The kind of air that you put inside of your faith, the kind of hope you put inside of your faith is what will make your faith strong and keep it strong no matter how long you wait. Now, this balloon reflects a person who has hope in God by having their faith in God. And this balloon reflects a person who has their hope in the world by having their faith in the world. Now, let's pretend that both these balloons believe that they can fly, okay? But this balloon believes that it can fly because God told it it can fly. And this balloon believes that it can fly because it's seen how the wind helps it fly. Now let's see what happens when I let go of them. Which balloon do you think is going to fly? Hmm? Both of them? None of them? Well, let's see. <laughs> they. The balloon that had its faith in God by having its hope in God flew, while the other one didn't. Why do you think this is? Well, the balloon that had faith in God had its hope in God. And when we have faith and when we have hope, our faith and our hope are strengthened also by what we hope in and what we have faith in. When we have our faith in people or the world, Sometimes people and the world disappoint us. That other balloon thought that the wind will pick it up, but there's no wind right now, so what's going to happen? It won't fly. But the other balloon believed in God and had its faith in God. And God never ever changes. God is not like people and He's not like the world. So He's always faithful and He keeps all of His promises. We know this because again, the Bible has told us so. That's how we can use our hope to strengthen our faith by putting our hope in God, trusting in God's faithfulness and how He is faithful to keep all of His promises. This is how boys and girls, Adam and Eve, Abraham, the Israelites, and all the people who were waiting on God's promise to bring a rescuer kept their faith strong. They put their hope in God. And by putting their hope in God, their faith did not become weaker no matter how long they waited. But here's the wonderful thing. God kept his promise and he did bring the rescuer who is Jesus. This is what we celebrate on Christmas Day, the very birth of Jesus. So while we prepare for Christmas, let's remember this. Let's remember how those people way back then in the Bible waited on God to keep his promise and how we get to celebrate how God did truly keep his promise. But do you know, that we also have a promise that God has given us? Yes, a new promise. Jesus gave us a promise before he went back to heaven, that he's not just leaving us alone, but that he would come back for us. 
And even before that, he promised that he would send the Holy Spirit who would be with us while we wait for him. And Jesus did send the Holy Spirit. He kept that promise. So just like God kept the promise to send a rescuer through Jesus, and just like Jesus kept his promise to send the Holy Spirit, he will also keep his promise to come back for us. So while we wait, we can wait knowing that God is faithful and that God will keep his promise so we can put our hope in him. That way, keeping our faith strong. Isn't this just amazing? It really is, boys and girls. We can put our hope in God and know that he will never disappoint us. Now let's prepare ourselves to go back to teacher Theo who will be recapping our big question. Remember our big question? Hmm? Okay, keep it in your minds when teacher Theo asks you what it is for us to know what the big idea for today's lesson is. Wasn't that wonderful boys and girls? So we learn that God is truly faithful. He has made a promise to his people such a long time ago, but he still kept it. He didn't say, oh, I forgot. I probably you forgot. I forgot. So we all forgot that promise is God. No, he actually kept his promise promise to his people. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that just amazing? And I hope now we can answer the big question. The big question is how do we keep our faith strong while we wait on God? And the big idea is by having hope in God's faithfulness to keep his promise because we know that he's going to carry on keeping his promise. Do you know that God has made a promise to you and I? He said he will come back again and he's going to keep that promise and then we're going to spend our entire life in paradise with him. So that's a promise that God is going to keep. All right boys and girls let's go through the memory verse and today's memory verse is from Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19 and it says our hope is certain, it is strong and secure. Our hope is certain, mean we know it will happen, there's no question about it, and strong and secure. All right, boys and girls, let's see if we can do this in actions. We're reading from Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, and it says, Our hope is certain. So you're going to have a tick for certain, and it is strong and secure. So you're going to put our legs down for secure, so we're secure in our hope. Let's try that again. It is from Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19, and it says, Our hope is certain, it is strong and secure. Yeah. All right, I hope you remember that. I'm going to just do the actions and you're going to say the words. I hope you got that right. It is from Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. Our hope is certain, it is strong and secure. I hope the Lord continues to bless you. I hope you remember that our hope is strong and secure and certain. And you carry on remembering this all the days of your life. Have a fantastic week ahead. Goodbye. Hey United Kids, I'm so excited about this series we started called Waiting in Wonder, where we are learning about the greatness of God's love while we wait, since of course we are also waiting on Christmas. But something we know as United Kids is that God does not just give us love for us to keep for ourselves, but he gives us love to also share with others. So all that we will be learning about in this series, we will be putting to practice by sharing God's love with our community. So as United Kids, we're going to be doing a stationary drive to help other kids out there who maybe don't have as much as we have. This way, reminding them about how God loves them and how we as United Kids are thinking about them and want to remind them of God's love too. So speak to your mommy and your daddy or look at maybe some savings you have in a piggy bank 
or you could also help your mommy and your daddy with some chores during the month of December and ask them to reward you through gathering stationery for these children in our community. We will be taking in stationery every Sunday and we will communicate with you the very items that we need. It will be so great for us to share God's love with our community all together as United Kids. I hope that you will be joining us too.